Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be covering the first 15 years of synth pop pioneer Gary Newman. Now, this is my favorite period of his music. Uh, he's put out a lot of music since then. The music's been a little bit darker, uh, but this is the stuff that I really, really love, and I wanted to cover it uh, in order just to make a shorter video, uh, so I stuck to this period. I always like to start off by, by saying how I got into the artist, and to be perfectly honest, I don't remember what came first, his appearance on Saturday Night Live or hearing him on Karo Q or but it was definitely during the replicas period. Uh, and just all of a sudden he was just there and all of us guys who love to collect new and interesting music just fell in love with his music. Now I followed it uh, and I have continued to follow it. Uh, maybe not as intently lately, but uh, definitely uh, he's still very much worth your while. Uh, but uh, let's start off at the very beginning here. Now, as usual, I do not cover live albums, uh, and I very rarely cover compilations, but I may mention a couple here. His recording career started in like 77, 78. It was a band called Tubeway Army, and they were uh, more or less like a punk trio. Uh, they put out a great single called That's Too Bad, but most of the stuff from that period was never released. Uh, that is until 1984 when his album called The Plan came out. So this here is actually the early Tubeway Army recordings, the early demos, uh, studio recordings, uh, the single That's Too Bad, which is just a fantastic song. This is all pre-synthesizer Gary Newman. Uh, as I said, a lot of these recordings didn't come out until 1984 when he had already left the Baker's Banquet label. Uh, but uh, uh, this collection here covers those years, 77, 78, and it's really a nice collection if you like that sort of edgy punk with pop melody. It's still quirky. It still has that Gary Newman edge to it. Now, the first official Tubeway Army album was just called Tubeway Army. This came out in 78. This is, he actually went into the studio to record an album. Sitting there in the corner was a synthesizer, and he started noodling and doodling with the synthesizer, and that changed the course of his music. So this still has that punky edge, but there's keyboards entering into it, uh, and it's really, really actually a cool collection. There is some bonus material on this Beggar's Banquet CD reissue. This is from 1978. Now, the first album that people really took notice of was Replicas. What an album this is. This has, you know, things like Me, I Disconnect From You. And, of course, his tracks, Our Friends Electric and Down in the Park. And this has Praying to the Aliens and You Are In My Vision. It's just a great collection of tracks there. It does have some bonus, as you can tell. And this is really when uh, the synthesizer came to the fore uh, uh, and he was creating something new and interesting. And of course, he started borrowing from David Bowie, constantly changing his image as his albums progressed. Now, Replicas was the last of the albums released under the name Tubeway Army. Uh, roughly six, seven months later, out comes The Pleasure Principle. Not the Janet Jackson album, but the Gary Newman album. This came out in September 1979. This is his first album under his name, Gary Newman. And this contains Cars. Uh, also Metal, Complex, Me. Lots of great songs on this album. Uh, this contains a bonus disc containing lots of bonus material. Uh, then in 1980, he followed that up with an album called Telecon. It's a darker, moodier album, and it is uh, probably one of my favorite Gary Newman albums. Uh, great songs on this include This Wreckage, uh, The Air Crash Bureau, uh, I'm an Agent, I Dream of Wires, and uh, Please Push No More. Uh, There's a single called I Die, You Die, which they added. The uh, uh, We Are Glass was a non-album single, which they've added. Uh, and there's also a song called here, Sleep by Windows, which I believe was on the American version of the album. They removed that and added the song, I Die, You Die. Great, moody Gary Newman album. But he was at the zenith, the top of his career. He retired from touring. He disbanded his band and went in a slightly new direction, which he revealed on the album, Dance which I have to admit, this is not one of my favorite Gary Newman albums. It's it, lo lots of great songs, yes. But the percussion on this, you know, it was like a new sound and it has not aged very well. In fact, even back then I was thinking like, gosh, that, you know, the drum sounds are really kind of weird and, 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 and kind of annoying, I guess. Slow Car to China, I like a lot. Uh, she's got Claws, Crash. This has bonus tracks on there. 
but since he had sort of shaken loose of the other members of Tubeway Army, uh, those guys got together in 1981, and they formed a band called Dramatis, and they released an album. Now, the CD didn't come out under the name Dramatis. It came out under the name Tubeway Army featuring Gary Newman, uh, the Dramatis Project. But this does have a song sung by Gary Newman called Love Needs No Disguise, which sound is like classic Gary Newman. This is 1981 as well. If you're a Gary Newman fan, it's definitely worth tracking down. Then in 1982, he continued in the same direction as Dance with an album called I Assassin. This is more of that strange mixture of what sounds like Asian and funk and synth pop and moody. And uh, uh, here has a lot of bonus tracks on there. I really like things like uh, White Boys and Heroes and Music for Chameleons and We Take Mystery to Bed. There's a lot of bonus tracks on there as well. Uh, I think this is a better album than Dance. It still has those weird drum sounds, but I love the fact that he was just doing something different. These last few albums were more sort of avant-garde, experimental, trying different things while still retaining that uh, classic Gary Newman sound. Uh, and then he followed that up in 1983 with new image there as you can see on every album he was always changing images um and this here of course it looks like it's uh mad max influenced interesting thing about this album is uh either all of it or a majority of it was co-produced by bill nelson uh but because of uh some something going on behind the scenes they had an argument and bill nelson had his name removed but this does contain some great songs like the title track and the iceman comes and the sister surprise uh love is like clock law interesting thing is is like on sister surprise uh he released it as a single but it had like a completely different chorus to it and and you know he would do that from time to time he would have an album version and then the single version would have a, either different lyrics a whole different melody for the chorus uh very interesting but gary newman still continuing on that um eccentric esoteric different vibe while he didn't sound like the band japan he was going in sort of that kind of direction that sort of creative uh you know not really caring so much about selling loads of records but making albums that he wanted to make uh, but then after this he left uh beggar's banquet records and formed his own label called numa records uh first album of course another image change this was 1984 i love the sound of his numa period completely different than anything he had done before in fact i'd say even though I'm not a fan of industrial music, uh, this music was closer to industrial. It was like synthesized industrial funk with great hooks. Uh, but again, with Gary Newman stuff, you know, starting with like dance and stuff, you had to listen to things a few times uh, in order to get the hooks. Because on the earlier records, they were just there for you to uh, listen to and love immediately. His other albums have, you know, required numerous listens and that's what i love about an album because even now i discover weird little things on these albums that i didn't hear before but berserker was a great album with a different image of course and on this album like the title track is great uh this is new love my dying machine cold warning a child with a ghost and then of course there's some bonus tracks there 1985 Another image change, uh, sort of continuing that same sound, but maybe not as cold, uh, is The Fury. And some of my favorite Gary Newman songs. In fact, one of my favorite uh, all-time Gary Newman songs is on this called Call Out the Dogs. But there's also uh, another song called I Still Remember. And he, he re-recorded the song as a benefit single. Uh, and it had a completely new set of uh, um, lyrics to it. But it was still the basic same music track. But anyway, uh, this album also has... Oh, gosh. Um, this Disease, Your Fascination, Miracles is another great song. And this, of course, has bonus tracks. 1986, he put out an album called Strange Charm. And again, this is continuing what he was doing with Berserker and the Fury. Um, Strange Charm has uh, My Breathing is a great song. New Thing from London Town, uh, I Can't Stop. Uh, the title track, This is Love. And, of course, there's... Uh, bonus tracks on that and sadly you know a lot of this stuff wasn't selling he wasn't this top 40 artist anymore uh the critics were crapping on him and you could tell in the lyrics that he was a little paranoid a little frustrated but he continued to make this really interesting music his fans still loved him and sure he wasn't top 40 
Critics have ne never been really nice to Gary Newman back in these days, at least. But it's still fascinating, wonderful music to listen to. Even though he wasn't getting the backing of a major indie label like Beggar's Banquet, uh, he was still putting out great albums uh, and moving forward. There was nothing else that sounded like any of these albums. Uh, so, so this is kind of almost my favorite period. You know, apart from like Telecon, uh, this is my favorite period of Gary Newman. In 1987, he was asked to add vocals uh, to a couple songs uh, on an album by a band called Radio Heart. The song Radio Heart in particular is the one that everybody knows and loves. And that did come out on CD. He sings three tracks on the album, Radio Heart, um, All Across the Nation, and London Times. Elton John plays piano on another song, not on the Gary Newman. But this is actually, uh, it's very commercial sounding. Radio Heart, even though he didn't write it, it's it, it, it sounds like it's straight from one of these albums, just a lot poppier. One of my favorite Gary Newman songs ever. Uh, I can listen to that song over and over and over again. I'd say it's his most commercial track since Cars. Uh, and uh, there's a CD here called Nicholson Newman, 87 and 94. And this has uh, remixes. It has like the regular versions, you know, the album versions, and then remixes of all those songs, plus another song he did with one of the guys from Radio Heart. But anyway, back to his normal career. Uh, after he did that, he put out an album called Metal Rhythm. This album was rejuggled and uh, issued in the U.S. as New Anger. They took took out a couple tracks, uh, added a couple tracks. Uh, but this is a very commercial sounding record. Not as industrial sounding as uh, the stuff on Numa Records, but this is actually kind of funky synth pop. Uh, this is emotion. New Anger, uh, Devious, America, Don't Call My Name. Those are great songs on this album. And, of course, this is a version with bonus tracks. And that's 1988 Gary Newman Metal Rhythm. In 1989, he paired up with British jazz musician Bill Sharp from the band Shack Attack, and they put out the album Automatic. It's really cool, very commercial uh, mixture of Shack Attack and Gary Newman, exactly as you would predict. And this is the version with bonus tracks. Great songs on this are, you know, Change Your Mind, which is probably the most well-known track here. Uh, no More Lies is great. I'm on Automatic is great. Uh, definitely an album for you to check out if you're a fan of Gary Newman during this period. Next, he put out an album called Outland. This is going back to that commercial funky vibe of metal rhythm. And there's that cool songs on this are My World Storm, Dream Killer, Heart. Uh, from Russia Infected, Devotion, Whisper, and there's some bonus tracks down there as well. And that is Outland, came out in 1991. The final studio album I'm going to talk about is one that I believe that he himself cannot stand, uh, and that is called Machine and Soul. That came out in 1992. This is a uh, version that has bonus tracks on it. And as you can tell by uh, maybe a couple of the tracks, he's gone further into the funky synth pop vibe uh, and he's done a version of 1999 by Prince which just kind of didn't sound right you know I mean Gary was always cool when he was doing uh, his own thing sounding only like Gary Newman but then when he started going into that Prince thing it just didn't sound um, uh, convincing I guess but there are still some cool songs on this album like this title track Skin Game, Emotion, Cry, uh, but yeah, uh, doing You Got the Look in 1999, the, the Prince songs, was, eh, you know. That's the last studio album. And that's it with my stack of Gary Newman basically covering 1977 to 1992. But I wanted to say thank you for spending some time and letting me babble about Gary Newman. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you would uh, share, comment, like, subscribe. And until the next time, remember me, I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie.